So I want to compare the motion of a couple different objects. First, I'm going to nudge this pen off the edge of the desk, and we should see something that's uh, pretty much in free fall. Yep, it accelerated all the way toward the ground. Now, there's some amount of air resistance that acted on the pen while it was falling, but we'll say that air resistance was negligible. Let's try again with the coffee filter. This time, the force of air resistance cannot be ignored. Give it a little nudge. It didn't seem to really accelerate other than at the beginning of its motion, right? For the first few centimeters of motion, it had to go from a speed of zero up to some value. But from there, the rest of the way down, it just seemed to drift at a constant speed. And as long as I have a coffee filter here, I can put them all together. This is a stack, I believe, of, um, oh, I think I have 16 or 17 coffee filters here. And I just want to quickly find the mass. So when I put the whole stack on board, the mass of the whole stack is just less than 16 grams, 15.78 grams. And, um, but because there's 16 of them in the stack, then it's a pretty good estimate to say that a single coffee filter has a mass of about one gram. Well, I want to show you the graphs of motion uh, for the case of free fall. So this was like the pen that I nudged off the desk. Its acceleration was just a steady value, always 9.8 meters per second squared. The graph of velocity versus time shows a steady increase. The speed is uh, increasing at 9.8 meters per second per second. The slope of this graph is a continuous value. Now position versus time we know is parabolic. What about the graphs for the coffee filter? By comparison, the acceleration started out at 9.8 meters per second squared, but then it rather quickly tapered off towards zero and it stopped accelerating. Its velocity then increased at first, but eventually when the acceleration gets close to zero, then the velocity almost becomes a steady value. We refer to that as uh, approaching terminal velocity. So the graph of position versus time starts out parabolic and at some point makes a transition. Somewhere around here it changes from being parabolic to just a linear graph. So we can see by comparison graphs of acceleration, velocity, and time for objects in free fall versus objects under the influence of air resistance um, are uh, quite different and the differences are hopefully easy to explain. Once the object gets to the point where it reaches its terminal velocity, then the downward pull of gravity and the upward force of air resistance here represented by BV, where B represents something called the drag coefficient and V represents how fast it's going. When those forces in opposite directions are equal, that doesn't mean the object stops moving, it means it stops accelerating at that point. And if it stops accelerating, then it reaches its final velocity, its terminal velocity. So the experiment we can do is one in which we try to solve for the value of the drag coefficient for a coffee filter. We need to divide the weight of the coffee filter by its terminal velocity. Well, a single coffee filter is about one gram, one times 10 to the negative third kilograms. And well, G is, of course, 9.8 meters per second squared. So to get terminal velocity, <clears throat> we're going to time a coffee filter falling for a distance of but we'll be a little bit clever about it. We're gonna take one coffee filter off of this stack. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this two meter long stick and hold it vertically. So imagine now this is in a vertical orientation. I'm gonna drop the coffee filter from above the two meter stick. It's gonna accelerate, and by the time it gets to the top of the meter stick, it will have reached its terminal. So for the remaining two meters, it's just going to travel at a constant speed all the way until it hits the floor. And I'll record that, and you can try to measure how much time that takes. If you can get that amount of time, then you just need to plug it into this equation. When you divide two meters by that amount of time, you have the terminal velocity that goes in the denominator, and you'll get a value for the drag coefficient for the coffee filter. So I'll set the coffee filter here. I'll set my meter stick here. 
and I just need to climb up on the desk. And uh, now's time for you to grab a stopwatch or grab your cell phone and put it in watch mode. And I think from this vantage point, you'll be able to see everything you need. filter from the top of the two meter stick because I want to give it time to accelerate up to its terminal velocity so I'll drop it from here and I'm not even going to say ready set go just you'll see when I release it and that when you notice it gets to my finger that's when you hit start and then by the time it hits the floor it'll have traveled two meters uh, and you'll have the information you need so Now, if you didn't feel like you timed it well, if you didn't start the stopwatch at the moment it got to the top of the meter stick or stop it at the very instant it hit the floor, you can hit rewind and replay until you're sure you've got a good measurement. And then you can complete the rest of the calculation and figure out what you believe the drag coefficient is for a coffee filter.